Guy Burns, Historical Crime Squad. <laughs> oh, Detective, thank goodness you're here. I am the Emperor Caligula, and I've been scared out of my wits. No need to worry, Emperor. Leave this to the professionals. Victim is male. Severe mutilations. I'll soon get my hands on the animal who tortured and killed this man. Oh, him? Oh, don't worry, that was me. That's just a friend that I got bored of. Now, let me tell you about this crime. No need to, I can see for myself. Oh! Victim has had his hands chopped off and a sign put about his neck, encouraging people to laugh and jeer. What kind of madman would do this? Yep, that'll be me again. You did it? Such a fun party. Now, about this crime. Oh, mother. What kind of sick-minded madman would attack a priest with a hammer? Mm, you're really not getting the hang of this, are you? That was me, too. He was trying to sacrifice a bull, but he gave me the hammer, you know, to do the honours. Then I hit him with it instead. <laughs> Priceless. All these bodies are me. So why exactly did you call me here? I think someone's trying to kill me. You don't say. Mm, believe it or not, I think there's one or two people out there who, for some unknown reason, don't seem to like me. One or two? I imagine half the Empire would like to see you dead. Really? You think so? Well, in which case, I'd better bump off anyone acting suspiciously. Victims were all killed by one paranoid and clearly psychotic Roman Emperor. Hmm. Talking into a small box. Talk about acting suspiciously. What do you think, Wackus Bonkus? Kill him. Ooh, you naughty Wackus Bonkus. What a good idea. <laughs> a detective. <laughs> This way, hearts of enemies we'd slay, mass sacrifice. To win at war, make crops grow more, to cure our kids when ill. The sun to shine, this song to rhyme, more victims we must kill. You won't survive, you won't survive. Ain't still alive, ain't still alive. Yeah. With sacrifice, we priests appease. Our gods each powerful big cheese. Let's hear it for your favorites, please. Ah! We're doing it for Tony. The Aztec goddess of the Earth's heart. We're doing it for Chantico. Goddess who makes volcanoes stop. We're doing it for Rizzo. The goddess of stone knives. We're doing it for Rizzo. All oh, oh, me talk, talk to Lee Chico, Chico now we're cattle. cattle. Uh, Some of the gods' great love. Told. Greetings, horror hound. I am Vincenzo Laffle, and this week's scary story is from the Middle Ages. It's called The Children of Woolpit. It was 1173, an especially eerie year 
when the small village of Woolpit in the county of Suffolk was invaded by creatures from another world. Indeed. One day, two aliens appeared in the village. These aliens had taken the form of two children, a boy and a girl, but their skin was bright green and they spoke in a strange alien language. Or something. Yes, the villages of Woolpit were terrified. These green-skinned aliens demanded to be fed, but what they ate was truly chilling. Something no real human child would eat without being forced. Yes, vegetables! And then, quite without warning, the boy alien dropped down dead. <laughs> And the girl alien? Well, that's the strangest part of all. She became a part-time domestic servant. <clears throat> it turned out that these children were not from Mars or Venus. They were from Belgium. They were orphans, the children of Belgian cloth makers. Their skin was green because of the dye the parents used on the cloth. They'd been living in the woods so long, the only food they recognised was vegetation. The boy died of malnutrition, the girl grew up. Learned English, got married and went to work for a local knight. This is not a scary story, is it? It's a sort of boring story with a weird beginning. That isn't the same thing. I mean, why am I here? I grew a goatee for this. It's unbelievable. I'm going to my dressing room and there had better be donuts. He had been evacuated from the city to a foster home in the country. This is your new home now, Charlie, until the Germans stop bombing London. Don't worry, you'll be safe here. Can I go play, Mrs. Jones? Of course, Charlie. Mind you don't come to any harm. But here, he was to face something even more terrifying than German bombs. It was like nothing he'd ever seen before in the city. <laughs> ah! It came from the meadow. Ah! It had horns to bark with, and it made a terrifying noise. Ah! It had six sides, and it had a tail on which hangs a brush. Don't be silly, Charlie. It's just a cow. Ah! Everything was new. Everything was scary. Ah! The farm. There's nothing to be scared of, Charlie. They're just farm animals. Now, why don't you go and have a nice, relaxing bath? A bath? Are you trying to drown me? The farm, just when you thought it was safer in the country. It is. It's true. Some children from the city had never seen animals before. And they weren't used to regular baths, either. When one pair of evacuees saw a bath, they really thought they were going to be drowned. <laughs> Me, I always have a regular bath. One every other year. Stupid deaths, stupid deaths, they're funny cause they're true. Woo! Stupid deaths, stupid deaths, hope next time it's not you. <laughs> oh, I blinked. You know, there's just no beating him in a staring contest. How does he do it? How do you... Oh. Next! And your name is? Henry the First, King of England. Oh, sorry. Well, Henry, you seem to have a little problem. Anything you'd like to divulge? Yes, I'll tell you my story, but I'm going to have to be quick. Yes, please. I was visiting my grandchildren in Normandy, and I had a lovely meal of my favourite dish, lamprey. Lamprey? Yes, it's a kind of eel. Well, nice. Oh, yes, yes, they are nice. That's mm. good. Carry on. My doctor had advised me, don't eat so many lampreys, they're bad for you, but I just love them so much, and I scoffed and scoffed and I scoffed and... Gop, 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 gop. And I had so many that I got a real pain in my gut. Did the eels make you feel eel? <laughs> Do you get it? Eel, ill. I'm saying ill. Eel, yes, Ill. I get Ill. it. Ill. Oh, it's just you didn't laugh, so I thought no. you didn't hear it. No. Okay, carry on. Well, my doctor advised me to take a laxative. He said it would give me diarrhoea for a day, but it would clear out my bowels. Mm, charming. Yes, and clear out my bowels. It certainly did. I just kept on pooing and pooing and pooing. Yes. Until I died. Ah! <laughs> 
Hey, you could say you were dying to go to the toilet. <laughs> oh, I'd leave it five minutes if I were you. It smells like someone's died in there. Oh, they have. You. <laughs> Can I go now? I'll just confer with the judges. Mm, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Mm, yeah. oh, I completely agree. No, no, I really need to go now. Well, Henry, congratulations. You're through to the afterlife. Thank you. Gangway! Phew-wee. You sure one of those wasn't you? Mm? You? Oh, how could you? Face of an angel. Oh, next! Stupid death, stupid death. Hope next time it's not you. <laughs> oh, I love what you've done to the garden. Well, we like it. I love the severed heads on spikes. Yes, it's a traditional Celtic thing. I mean, I love it. It's low maintenance and it wards off the burglars. Yes, I can see that. Yes. Well, I mean, we needed to do something nice with them. You know, the shed is full of severed heads. It's Alan. He's always bringing them back from battle. Yeah, my bill's just the same. He brought three home just last week. Oh. <laughs> have, um, have any of yours got magical powers? Hey. Well, it's just I've got this one head that utters prophecies. Oh, yes, I've heard about those. Now, what does it say? Oh, well, it's, it's a bit vague, to be honest. Um, bad things afoot, dark days beckon, things like that, really. I mean, ask him if it's the right day for putting the washing out. You won't get a straight answer. <laughs> Still, it's nice for me to have a bit of a chat while I'm doing the weeds. Evening, ladies. Hi, Alan. Hello, love. Darling, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, whatever could it be? <laughs> it's not another severed head, is it? It's a pure gold necklace beset with ruby and jade. Oh. Well, that's, uh, that, that's lovely. Thank you, Alan. Not really, it's a severed head. Oh. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Today is a good day to hang the washing out. Now that is more like it. Thank you. And now time for our fairy tale series, where all the stories are retold in different historical settings. Today, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, the Saxon version. When the bear family returned home from their nice walk, they saw that someone had eaten up all of baby bear's porridge. And when the bears went into the bedroom, they found Goldilocks still asleep in baby bear's bed. Goldilocks woke up with a start to see three angry bears staring at her. Before you could say, who's been eating my porridge, she was branded with the letter F Ow! and had her ears and hands cut off because that's what they used to do to thieves in Saxon times. The end. And your host are talking rats. The past is no longer a mystery. Welcome to Horrible History.